Good morning. As always, it's nice to have you here with us. Today we'll be celebrating the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of our old pastor, Monsignor Haggerty. And let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by our God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim, Proclaim his marvelous deeds to, to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. 
Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations, give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory do his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, to another the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit and to another faith of the same spirit, and another gifts by healing by the one spirit, to another mighty deeds, another prophecy, another discernment of spirits, another varieties of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, may I have your blessing. May Almighty God bless you that you will worthily proclaim the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. And when the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. And there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it had come from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then when people have drunk freely an inferior one, but you, you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this in the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Uh, welcome. I'm so glad you're able to, to tune in on our YouTube channel. Uh, glad you're here worshiping with us. And today's a really exciting day because uh, this is the first miracle that Jesus performs, turning the water into wine. Essentially what he's doing is taking something that's good and making it better. You know, John uh, calls this a sign. And he calls it a sign because it reveals the glory of God in Jesus Christ, who himself is 
God incarnate. He has the power to transform physical things, including us. You know, one of the interesting things that I find is this is really, the story is kind of a continuation of the salvation story. And if we go back to ancient Egypt, so we've got the people of Israel, they've been held captive for 400 years. They're in slavery to the Egyptians. We know the story, Moses comes, God works miraculous deeds through Moses. They leave Egypt, they cross the Red Sea, they're in the wilderness, and suddenly they go, huh, now what? I've been a slave for 400 years. My whole family history is tied up in being a slave. That's my identity. Not anymore. Gee, you know, everything I knew about society and how to act and how to behave was tied up in the Egyptians. What do I do? And God says, I've got this. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be your God. You're going to be my people. You are going to be identified as the people of God. And I'm going to separate you from others because we're going to have a set of rules that teach us how to live, how to worship. And we're going to, through you, bring the salvation to the entire world. So God created this set of rules. And he did it because, of course, he wants us to follow a whole bunch of rules. No. He did it because these rules, these, this way of living in a community is, teaches us how to live holy, how to live pleasing to God. So back to Jesus. Jesus comes to say, hey, the old identity, the old order was good, but what I bring is this new covenant, this new relationship, and it's better. The old covenant was the water, the new covenant is the fine wine. And Jesus keeps it simple for us. He says, you know, in this old order, the old way, we had maybe six, I think there's over 630 plus rules that the Jewish people had to follow. And we know from other parts of the gospel that Jesus really whittles it down and makes it simple for us. There's two rules. Love God with all your mind, body, and soul, and love others as yourself. Pretty simple. And Jesus also tells us in Matthew, not part of our reading today, but he tells us in Matthew that we can still go astray. And in fact, in his time, you know, there was a saying that, hey, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. And by way of example, to show you the, the, the good to the better, Jesus says, no, love your enemies. And to take it even a step further, not only do I want you to love your enemies, I want you to pray for those that persecute you. He's taking something good and he's making it better. That's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus gives to us as individuals as well. There's this open invitation, an open invitation to believers, to non-believers, to, to have that relationship with Jesus, to identify as a Christian. Oh, and by the way, the order he set up for us to live in is in a church. We worship together. This is what makes us holy when we come forward and take communion, where we have plain wine that becomes better. It's transformed into the blood of Christ. It's always, it's always is better with Christ. So for us personally, you know, I think we all experience this. Sometimes we're broken. Certainly the, the people of Israel wandering in the desert, story after story attested to their brokenness, just like us. Divorce, strife societal issues, political issues, you name it, war, famine. There was brokenness. There's disorientation. Big word just means, gosh, what do I do? And I think about when I was a teenager, 
coming out of you know my mother's care and control and my father's care and control and suddenly I'm left to my own devices you know what's the purpose of my life where am I going maybe the same thing for somebody graduating college you know what's next for me am I just fumbling around am I fumbling around in my own created desert and Jesus extends the invitation to say hey identify with me and I'll turn your life into uh, the richness that you're looking for. I'll turn your, I'll make your life rich like fine wine. Listen, if you're feeling the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart right now, listen. Don't let go, respond positively to that. Say, yes, I want to have a better life. I want to go from good to better. I want to be rich like fine wine, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Jesus is there to provide that. And I would offer this too. If you feel like you need someone to talk to, you know, the church... Uh, phone number is on our is on our bulletin as well as on site or online. Feel free to call, contact me. Uh, I'll call back. We'll connect. Even if we connect over you know Zoom or you know telephone, we'll have a virtual cup of coffee and talk about it. But don't ignore what Jesus is inviting you to. You know, it's one of those things where I've heard the old story. You know, you're reading the menu, but you know. It's time to order. You know, again, Jesus calls all of us, believers and non-believers, to that richer life in him and in his church where we can be nourished and we can encourage one another. Allow him to do that for you. He wants to. I encourage you to just let him. God bless you. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For the church, may the Lord bless her and protect her from all evil as she proclaims the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our civil leaders, may God lead them in working for charity, justice, peace, and reconciliation in a divided world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and suffering, May God bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, 
May the Holy Spirit guide us in using the gifts God has given us to build up the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For Monsignor Haggerty, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, died in the light of Christ. May they soon enter the wedding feast in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to give us the gift of your transformative grace. Help us to grow each day to be more and more like your Son. We offer these in all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. sacrifice in your sight this day and season to Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. While in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Monsignor John B. Haggerty, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
And now, since we cannot have regular communion, please pray with me or recite with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Uh, before we leave, there is an announcement, and uh, that is that tomorrow is the observance of Martin Luther King's birthday, so our parish office will be closed. I always do that for three reasons. One, in the church, we generally can't um, uh, pay our employees enough. One thing we can do is give them days off, and uh, you know the way the staff works, you know the work always gets done, and um, but they have a, a good day where they can spend the day at home with their families or doing whatever they want. Secondly, uh, I'm not very good at taking a day off, and so every national holiday I do take the day off, and I really thoroughly enjoy it. So that'll be that. And then thirdly, of course, Martin Luther King himself, I think, is somebody we should all celebrate and admire. He was somebody who saw grave injustice in this nation we love, and he did everything he could to help to solve the problem and make things better. And he did so in a loving, persuasive, nonviolent way. And I think he's a good example for us in this day and age. There's a whole lot of hatred out there in the world. Sometimes there's a whole lot of hatred in here in our hearts. And we need to look at people like Martin Luther King and say, you know what, there is a better way to live, a good way to argue, a good way, a better way to persuade, and a, well, a better way to make things better. So anyway, have a good day tomorrow, and have a good week, and thank you for being with us. We will sing a song to God on the morning of our sorrow. We will sing our song to God.